So, I work at my local car dealership, where I mainly wash cars and do deliveries for people who buy new cars. So on this particular delivery, it was late, about 6 or 7 p.m., and probably the last car of the day for me. So as most of my coworkers were clocking out, I had maybe four other people with me who work the night shift. So, as I was finishing up the washing part, I saw that I needed to go get this car gassed up at a gas station right down the road. It was getting dark out and I was in a not so good area, so I wanted someone to come with me to fill it up. But sadly, everyone was either leaving or working on their own deliveries, so I had to man up and go on my own. Now, if I hadn't already said, this is my first job, and one of my first deliveries at night, ironically. Being me, I took a small blade with me that you would typically use to get stickers and glue off windows. So, as I approached the gas station, it was really dark with only a few lights on every other gas pump. And of course, I took the lit lane. This is where things take a dark turn. So usually, you would go inside to give the cashier a slip for the brand new car you need to fill with gas. And as I was walking in, I saw a middle-aged man, looked kind of homeless, start to look at me and the car I just exited. Now, I didn't think anything of it, so I went inside and gave the cashier the slip. But before going back, I saw the man was now approaching the car I was on. So I casually walked outside, trying to ignore that he was staring at me blindly. He then walked right next to me and asked, Hey kid, mind if I get a ride? I then replied, No, sorry sir, we're not allowed to give people rides. He then asked me again, totally ignoring what I had just told him. Can uh, I get a ride in your car? I need to go somewhere where you can meet my other friends. That made my heart drop. Uh, no sir, again, sorry, but I cannot do that. And as this was happening, I was firmly holding that little knife in my pocket while outside alone with nobody else. The man then proceeded to take a knife out of his jacket. So, you gonna take me or what? He said with a low voice. That's when I knew what I had to do. Being me, I didn't try to fight him as his knife was considerably bigger than mine. So I said, Yeah, sure, I'll take you. Just let me fill her up all the way. He didn't ease up still holding the knife firm. So I then said, Okay, get in. And as he was about to open the door, I slammed the gas and floored it away. Now the story doesn't end here. He then somehow managed to find out where I worked, then we had to call the police. They arrived and the man was arrested, but who knows what the sick bastard would have done to me if I would have let him in. And luckily, I was fast enough not to get the car I was washing damaged at all by him. So I then later quit the night shift and started working daylight hours. Haven't had anything happen since. Number 2 Okay, so I worked the night shift during the summer on a ward for people with drug addiction on the local hospital. The place is fairly new, only 30-ish years or so since it opened up. When I started, I heard the veterans speak about the ghost upstairs or in the yard, but as a non-believer, I of course dismissed it. Mind you, I'm not a true believer of ghosts, even as we speak right now, but I've been through some stuff here that I just can't explain. A bit of history that's happened up until now that has me wondering. We have surveillance cameras outside, 
Not sure if they actually record anything, but they at least stream it directly to the TVs in the office where we spend most of the time. This is to see if anyone's at the door and or if someone's trying to escape, buy, or sell drugs outside. The third week, I noticed one of the cameras showed a vague, humanoid figure walking across the yard. I didn't really think much of it and dismissed it as a bad camera or a strange lighting that played tricks. Apparently, as people talk, I've heard many stories about this man walking across the yard every now and then. The other strange things are a few patients that refuse to sleep in their rooms and tell us why. I still don't know their stories. Other than that, it's been the dragging sounds upstairs, a few knocks and a noise from an otherwise empty room. Nothing really big. So today, I felt brave, and as soon as the dragging sound started, I went upstairs to check. Upstairs are the doctor's offices and meeting rooms, so they are unoccupied during the night. I walk upstairs to check what it is, but I notice the floor is just as empty and dark as it's supposed to be. I turn on the lights to check around a little bit, but it's as silent as ever. As I decide it's nothing here, I walk out the door and I don't even have the time to close it before I hear the sounds of a chair dragged across the floor again. Of course, it's still empty. Now I'm sitting in the office, fucking freaked out with no way to explain what just happened upstairs. Number 3 I work as a campus security officer at a well-known college in good ol' South Carolina. The job is without a doubt the best job I have ever had. Beautiful campus, supportive, cooperative students, friendly staff. All in all, with the exception of the occasional emergency or difficult traffic stop, it's really laid back especially for a law enforcement job. Working for a college campus is kind of like being a town guard in Skyrim. You have your own borders to patrol, your own little town, and you know everyone, and everyone knows you. Nothing but petty thievery and drunken brawls, and certainly no bandit raids. It has a small town feel to it, and I love it, but like any small town, it has its fair share of local haunted buildings and supernatural happenings. At first, one can disregard such talk as crazy, or the students having overactive imaginations. I'm of college age, so I understand where they are coming from. Having a haunted building on campus would be wicked cool. And if you really want something to be haunted, you will make it so with your mind alone. Next thing you know, your experiences with the paranormal spread out among the rest of the student body, starting rumors at the cafeteria, then more rumors of other people's experience and yada yada. Eventually, boom, the place is haunted. It wasn't until I started working third shift that I realized some of these stories may be true. As you can imagine, we have a rather large lockup list to attend at the end of every day. About 40 buildings, each with hundreds of rooms to check. So it takes a while. Anyways, I was with my partner and we were clearing up one of the larger, central buildings on campus. Our campus has a curfew during the week for security purposes, so as you can imagine, students get pretty creative when it comes to hiding places. Thus, we had to learn them all by checking every nook and cranny in every single room in every single building, else we could be reprimanded. We finished up, having triple checked every room. The building was empty. 
We double checked every single perimeter door and the lockup was complete. No cars were in the parking lot. No students were anywhere nearby. We called into dispatch that the lockup was finished and moved on to the next building. After lockup, I got in my patrol car and drove around as per usual, checking up on everything and making sure no one is sneaking around after curfew doing drugs or whatnot. Just campo things. I got a call from dispatch that said the perimeter alarm for the central building was going off. Cue the blue lights, and I meet my partner on scene. We then have to begin the painstaking process of clearing every single room on every floor all over again. When we got there, the door was opened, but no one was there. We couldn't figure out who had triggered the alarm, so we figured it was a teacher who had just forgotten something in their office. The downstairs doors were still locked, so we unlocked them to go check the rooms that lined the halls below us. Four hallways make up the downstairs, in a basic, square bottom floor shape, each stretched out about 50 yards or so, and each was dimly lit by emergency lighting. We cleared them one by one until we got to the last hallway. There, at the end, in the very middle of the dark hallway was a single desk facing us. The desk had seemingly come from nowhere. Each classroom cannot be opened without a key once it's locked, and once they are cleared, they are immediately locked down. None of the downstairs doors had been open. It is 100% safe to say no one had been in there. We look at each other and slowly approach the desk. We triple check each classroom, but there's just no way someone could have hidden in there and waited for us to do this. The desk was staring at us, and I know that doesn't make sense, but the desk seemed to be almost occupied, even though it was empty. I felt as if we were being watched as we approached. The eerie feeling growing stronger the closer we got. As we passed the desk, the feeling went away. Admittedly, we, too, fully armed, trained and equipped officers quickly left the building after we locked it again, both of us very unsettled. About 30 minutes pass, I'm on patrol again, and dispatch notifies me that the alarm is going off again. We return to the building to find it was maintenance. Admittedly relieved, we asked them what they were up to and they were simply tending to an issue upstairs. We still had to clear every room again, per lockup regulations. We deactivated the alarm, said goodnight to the maintenance fellas, and began our third lockup. The doors to downstairs hadn't been touched. We go to clear downstairs again, and the hairs on both of our necks stand up. We were seriously spooked. Neither of us wanted to go down there, but we had to. I'm certain we nearly held our breath the entire time approaching that last corner. When we rounded it, the desk had company. Two more joined it, facing the wall. The third was still staring us down. We quickly locked up and left, hoping that would be the last time we got called to do that building until morning. I am still fairly new here and I'm sure that this will not be the last unsettling experience I have on this old campus.